everybody, welcome back to another plein air painting video. We're already set up on the side of the road and we're in kind of a valley. The feature of today's painting is a very large, very old looking tree. I'm not sure what kind, it might be like a cottonwood or something like that, but uh, it was pretty misty today, this morning. And so there's a lot of, even though it's very bright and sunny, there's still kind of an atmospheric hazy quality to the air today. So that's gonna be cool because there is some fantastic layering of bluffs going back behind this old tree. So it's gonna be simple, but we actually have a large canvas to work on today, a 16 by 20 inch canvas. So yeah, we're set up, like I said, we're ready to get into it. I'm gonna show you guys what we're working with and we'll get a composition together before we put our sketch on. So let's take a look. All right, everybody, this is what we got to work with. I love the bluffs in the background. I really like how they're sloping down to this point. So I'm thinking something right in there like that. So this tree is gonna be the focal point. It's really massive, really cool. I might do a few uh, changes to the shape of the tree. I might want to branch it out a little bit, maybe have a branch coming off like that. Who knows, not quite sure yet, but uh, we got a beautiful sky right up in here that I wanna have a lot of. I'm thinking having the cutoff point be right about there on the bottom. I'm not quite sure if I wanna have the canvas horizontal or vertical yet. I was going to bring a actual palette to put the paint on today, but I forgot that. Uh, I happen to have the Peshad box with me in the car, so I'm gonna use this for the palette today. And on the palette, we have our usual colors, titanium white, sky blue, Payne's gray, some burnt sienna, burnt umber, brilliant red, yellow ochre, and lemon yellow. I have decided to have the canvas be horizontal. So the tree is going to go somewhere right in here. And the bluffs will be like that. I always like to start out with the horizon line. So I'm gonna put that in first. And the paint I'm using, because the canvas is toned so dark, uh, I'm gonna be using basically titanium white to do the sketch. So I want the horizon to be lower, probably right about here. And I think a cool trick when you're getting the uh, slant of something in the composition, you can actually hold out your brush and get the slant and then bring it over. And then you can just bring it across like that. And I think I want to have, there's, okay, so the bluffs, they kind of come down like this. They're in a general slant going downward towards the right of the canvas. But then there's also a portion of the bluff that comes off a little bit farther back and has kind of a peak right back there. But I might want to lower everything just a little bit. So I think I'm going to do that. And I want to bring that peak over a little bit more. Okay, it's looking chaotic, but remember, if you can see what it is in your own head, that's all that really matters for the sketch. And then we have a line of corn in the background, right about there. It kind of ends right there. And then, yeah, so that's the corn. You got corn, there's some, I guess there's some trees kind of right back in here too, but the tree is gonna go right about here. Okay, so it comes up from the corn. It kind of just comes, looks like from this angle, it's coming straight out of the top of this foreground corn. Comes up like this and pretty much branches out like this. Okay, so that's, right, that's, this was tripping me up, this, this kind of scrub that out, that's, that's not there, this is the bluff line, 
We got the tree. Okay, so there's a branch that comes off pretty low. Comes up with some stuff off of there. I like that. We got branches. Two kind of main trunks that come up. Branches coming off. And I also do want to feature some of those clouds and they're kind of coming off at an angle like this, which I like because you have a contrast of lines. You have a line that's coming this way for the slopes and then you have the clouds coming up like that from the same general direction over there. And then you have the tree offset from that. So it's kind of creating some nice vectors that I think will showcase this tree in the end. So clouds are gonna go up like that and I think we're ready to put the block in on. Using titanium white and sky blue, I'm gonna drop in that sky up here. And I wanna move quick because I got a lot of area to cover. I might actually switch brushes in a minute here if I decide this is going too slow. But I am noticing with the sky that the blue is darker more true the farther up we go and then it lightens up the farther down we go so this area is going to be pretty light and then this area up here is going to be pretty dark so i'm going to add some more sky blue up in here we'll just kind of blend it down Okay, let's get some titanium white down in this area. Darker up here. I want to start thinking about the general cloud shapes in there as well. So I'm going to take some titanium white, take a quick look up at the sky, and start to put that in. We can actually form some cloud suggestions in the sky by taking this dark blue and just kind of chiseling out some of that lighter blue. Very loose brush strokes at this stage. All right, so now I've mixed up a color for these background bluffs, which is a very cool green. So I'm going to, uh, test that out here it's okay I might uh, switch it up a little bit add some burnt sienna some more yellow ochre to it okay I want to have it get a little bit darker as we come closer so some Payne's gray some yellow ochre Oops, that's too much yellow ochre. And a little bit of burnt sienna. And we'll just have it get a little bit more chromatic, a little bit darker as we come forward with it. And because it's autumn, I don't mind having that autumny color in there. Okay, I like that. Now I've created a little bit of a darker mixture, a little bit more green, using the colors on our palette. And I'm gonna bring that right at this level. Darken it up a little bit. Darker colors are gonna be the Payne's Gray, that's gonna darken stuff up. The Burnt Umber is gonna darken stuff up. So I'm adding a little bit of those into it. Okay, guys, I like that. That's looking good. And darker yet, another darker layer here. Right above where that corn is going. And a 
cool it down a little bit with some blue. That's too much blue. Wow. Too much blue. We can just add a little bit of that ochre back in there. Okay guys, now we're gonna go for some of that corn. And I'm gonna put it on a lot lighter. It's looking a little too yellow here, so I'm gonna add some titanium white and a little bit of burnt sienna to it. And we're just gonna put that corn in. A light brown, that's what I'm thinking, just like a light brown. Something that the sun can hit. It needs to be a little bit more brown. I think. Okay, now I want to put in the green grass underneath it, which I can do by taking some sky blue and lemon yellow, and we're just gonna stick it right in there like that. It's looking a little bit too much like the corn, and that's probably just because I'm moving so quick, so I'm just gonna lighten it up with some more lemon yellow. I'm gonna put a shadow quick. Okay, looks pretty good for now. And then we got some more corn, which is a little bit of a darker value below. And I'm just taking a little bit of our Brilliant Red, some Burnt Sienna. We're gonna stick it in there and just see how it looks for right now. Okay guys, now we're gonna put the tree in and then see how we feel about everything after that. So I'm gonna start with the darker uh, foliage on the inner portion of the tree and then I'll work kind of outward from there and then I'll put the trunks in after all of that so let's go ahead and put those in okay Now as I'm putting this on, I want to be making sure that it's not the darkest value of the tree because I want the trunks to be the darkest value. So I'm making them dark, but I'm not making them as dark as I can. And it's kind of a greenish brown. And remember, I want to simplify. I don't need to paint every leaf. I just need to paint the shapes that they make. I'm also keeping in mind the areas where the highlights are gonna go. Okay, next up, we're gonna start to put on some of those highlights. And this is basically just uh, gonna be lemon yellow and yellow ochre. It's a little bit bright. I'm hoping it will mix Because the sun is kind of shining all around it, the whole outer area of the tree is going to be highlighted. All right, next up, I'm gonna put the trunks into the tree. And I'm gonna do that by taking Burnt Umber and Payne's Gray. And I'm gonna to have to keep darkening it up because remember I have that uh, white paint on there from the sketch. Okay, we have one that kind of offshoots in this direction. It goes up. We have one splits off up into here. And I'm seeing 
a lot of branches. Okay guys, blocking's on. Now we are gonna go over the whole thing again and add in the final touches. So I wanna clean up the brush really good before going back into the sky. And I want to make it a little bit more uh, multi-chromatic, which is a fancy way of saying I want to add a little bit more color into it that's different from just the blue. I think that'll help connect the colors a little bit better. So I'm going to take titanium white and burnt sienna, and I'm going to come down in here and add that into the blue. I'm just going to dirty it up a little bit. And I also want to take some of that sky color while I'm at it and punch a few holes in this tree. Just in a few different spots. Need to lighten it up a bit. Just because I want a little bit more shape to that tree. I want to lighten up the sky quite a bit. It's because I'm noticing the contrast between the sky and the tree is a little bit more sharp, a little bit more dramatic than what I got going on. So I'm going to try my best to lighten up this background sky a lot more by adding titanium white starting down below and working my way up. Okay, I think that's pretty much good for the sky for now. I want to actually address these background bluffs here by raising up the ridge a little bit. Okay. I'm noticing that this ridge comes up a little bit more to a point right here, but I think it's actually kind of already there. I just need to chisel away at it to get the shape better because I don't want it any higher than that. So I'm gonna take some titanium white and kind of sculpt in here quick. Okay, I like that a little bit better. Next step, I'm going to take my more detailed round brush and I'm going to come into this area here, these bluffs, and start adding in some shadows and highlights as well. Keeping in mind the general pattern where the further back you go, the cooler the colors, and then the farther forward you come, the darker and more uh, yellow the colors become. Seeing a bunch of highlight right in this area. I want to be careful because I don't want to go overboard doing this. I just want to keep it subtle. There are some areas in here that are actually quite dark, some pine trees. I don't want to get too specific with the details, so I'm just uh, trying to go quick and not allow myself to start uh, lollygagging, putting in smaller brush strokes, even though that's what I really, really want to do. If you've been with me on my channel for a while, you know that I do like to spend a lot of time on my paintings. I don't like to feel rushed. I'm very detail oriented. So that's one thing that these plein air paintings are really helping me with is 
working quicker and loosening up my brush strokes, which is very beneficial in many ways, but that's something I've never really had to do before. And it's opening up a whole different mindset of painting to me, which I'm really happy about because I think I was weak in that area. If you spend too much time on details, I think you can miss out on honing your skill in other areas, becoming more well-rounded in other areas such as seeing the picture, the composition as a whole and how things work together. Now that's pretty much what it does look like. Sometimes when you're painting, it helps to step back every once in a while and take a look at the painting from, let's say six or uh, even nine feet away. You'll be able to see the values very well. You'll be able to see a smaller version of your painting, kind of like looking at a thumbnail and everything kind of comes into a different light when you look at it from a little bit farther back and you're able to see things that you can't see closer up. Okay, now I wanna come in here and start making some corn stock shapes, very simply. I just look at, I want them all to kind of be leaning in different directions and have some further back as well. get some highlights on there as well which is very bright titanium white mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna and brilliant red we'll just get a few highlights in there quick Some of the highlights are very, very bright even. And there's a lot more warmth to the color of the corn as it comes forward. So I'm gonna put more burnt sienna in there in just a minute, I think. I could really spend a lot of time on this, but I can't because I'm running out of time. The sun has already moved in the sky, shifting the light. And so I just want to get some general, general shapes in for now. And I'm leaving this area dark because that's where the shadow of the tree is going to be. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for the corn for now. I might want to have some of these darker corn stalks come up over this grassy area right here. Okay, now I want to add in some highlight back in this area. The sun is really hitting that portion of the grass. And also right here. All right, now I want to work on this tree some more. I want to start by putting in some branches.
now we're going to put on a few more highlights. And the tree is going to come out just a little bit further because of that, which is what I wanted. I want to fill it out a little bit more. And the farther out we go, the more sparse, I guess, the leaves become. It's looking a little bit too bottle brush. So I think I'm gonna bring this area out a little bit and I'm gonna pull that area back. So we just wanna cover it like that. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is a hawk flying way up there at the tip of my finger, right up there. I want to put a hawk in, so we're going to do that quick. Okay guys, I think I want to put him right up here. So with a very steady hand, actually, you know what, sometimes if you wipe your brush a little bit, you can get a flat edge. So I'm going to take brush and put our hawk in. Right about there. Okay guys, this is pretty much it. I like the values. I think uh, they're working out pretty good with what I had to work with. Although, I do think, if anything, I could lift the value, which means make it lighter uh, in the background sky. I did that a little bit. Uh, I could even add some more titanium white into there. I might do that in the studio later, who knows. But just as a note for you guys, um, because I noticed that the contrast was pretty high between the tree and the background sky. Um, that may be just because the light did change on me. I'm not so sure it was that way at the beginning. And everything else I, I really like. Um, it's a simple painting. We had a large canvas, everything had to be quick. So again, the result is very loose. So yeah, happy with the result. That is gonna do it for this one. Been out here for a while. The larger canvas uh, is a little bit more time consuming, although I did try to go quick. But overall, this was a great learning experience. I definitely recommend it if you have a nice quiet spot, which this was nice and quiet uh, to set up to do a little bit of a larger size. But yeah, happy with the result. I could probably take this back to the studio and tweak it a little bit, but for now, we're gonna call it good. Appreciate you guys taking along. If you liked the video, leave me a thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next video. Until then, God bless you guys. We'll see you later. Thank you.